Darren was a great kid. I mean, he was you know, articulate, very athletic, and sometimes very sensitive. I mean, he's always been very smart and ahead of his age as far as intelligence is concerned. Everything he tried, he excelled at it. When he was probably about seven years old playing football, he came out there and was just dominating. I mean, stiff arming people and just knowing the playbook. He knew yes. everybody's offense, so the coach all he had to say was, hey, yes. we're going to the 49 on he offense. Knew. He was like, oh, I, I know what to he do. Knew. So it, it was he great. He knew everyone's plays. Yeah, it was great. When Darren uh, got into high school, initially he was still playing football, baseball, and basketball. To us, he seemed to have a lot of friends. You know, he was, he was I guess, a typical teenager. We've always, since they were little, talked to them about drug and alcohol uh, addiction and problems in our families. You will have a higher propensity to become an addict because it's in your genes. But you know, when you're young, you, you think you can do everything and you have that mindset that it's not gonna happen to me. There were some things that like I saw in Darren, like mainly the mood swings in my family. There was some mental illness there. So um, I was thinking, I was like, well, is he bipolar? You know, I was thinking along those lines. I had not gotten to the drug part at that time when he was in high school stuff. I was a weekend warrior, right? Playing sports and all that kind of stuff, right? So I would sprain this and break that or whatever, right? And you know, that you'd go and they'd give you a big bottle of pills, you know? And I would take a few initially, but then after that, you know, I, I would leave them alone. I had a whole bottle sitting in there. And next thing you know, I started going, oh man, I sprained my ankle. Why do you go get one of them pain pills? And a lot of them is pretty much gone, you know? And that's when I kind of realized, hey, oh, wait a minute. You know, we know the signs, right? Because we grew up with it, right? Throughout our family. So I started realizing, well, okay, this is, this is stepping into a different realm now. As a mom, it's this thing that you feel in your gut. When he was in full-blown whatever he was into, that's when he was avoiding us, avoiding having contact with us. He didn't understand the depths of it and what it was actually doing to him. You know, when they're in that thing, they can't see themselves like we can. My lowest point with his addiction came right before he was suspended because we knew there was things going on. But when that hit, uh, that was like a punch in a, a, a gut, I don't know, a slap up the head, wake up, what the heck is going on here situation because, and I was very, I realized I was extremely angry. I was extremely angry with him and, and extremely disappointed. Then, you know, you have to think about how that drug has a hold on him. Is he gonna make it, you know? Is he gonna is he gonna survive? Because you know, addiction just can grow and grow and grow and you get to a point where you know you, you never know when something can happen. I would lay awake at night, you know, and so those fears just compounded on top of each other. Or the phone rang, it I'd tell her, Oh, is, is that something about Darren? you know, and, and she would she would say, No, why, why are you thinking like no, it's not about Darren, it's just that kind of the unknown. Where's his head and when's the next shoe gonna drop? Hi, I'm John Guidry. I'm with uh, Bank of Nevada, and I joined the Waller Foundation a little over a year ago. We have a daughter that uh, has had um, an addiction uh, challenge for most of her adult life. And our story began uh, in her first semester of college when she had shared that she'd gone to a party and tried methamphetamine with a friend. It seemed to be a continual struggle since then and has continued for a little over 15 years. It's painful. I mean, it's painful to watch your child have to struggle with the addiction and the hold that it has on her. In particular, in the case of drug and alcohol addiction, it doesn't seem like too many families have been spared this. It seems like it's a prevalent problem around yes. our country, around the world maybe. And one of the reasons we felt that this organization is so important is that it addresses self-esteem at the onset and that is a preventative measure and I think looking at someone that has gone through that story like a Darren Waller that can speak to what he personally went through resonates more than what somebody else can say. The Wall Talks I believe it's a great idea, and Darren's very enthusiastic about this because, once again, he'll be able to help teens, maybe help them make some better decisions. Maybe someone is feeling the way that Darren was feeling when he was in high school. And because he's been through it, maybe they'll listen to him.